Dan Perry here with another C++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this video we will look at mixing floating point and integer math. And what I've done is <clears throat> I have created some uh, variables and a C out so that we can take a look at some mixing of the integer and floating point math. I've got three integers and three floating point numbers, double precision floating point numbers. For this example, it really doesn't matter whether they're single or double precision, but we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just add a few calculations and show you what happens with each of those calculations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say f num 3, the third number, is equal to, uh, let's make it easy, f num 1 plus f num, uh, I'm sorry, uh, i num 1, where the f and the i have just for our purposes done so that we can very easily see uh, whether, what the, uh, whether it's a floating point or an integer value. And like in previous videos, for the purposes of knowing what we've done in the output, I'm going to put that calculation there. Now I'm going to essentially duplicate this calculation, but instead of the floating point number, I'm going to change those to the integer numbers for my results that I'm going to output. So I'm going to see the same math operation, the same addition, and let you see what the differences are if you're doing floating point and integer math. So when we run this one, now <clears throat> with the floating point, we took the 2.5, added it to the 5, and it gave us a 7.5 for the output. Now, we added the two, same two numbers together, but with the integer, we got a 7. And we've got the 7 because, remember that integer math, you don't have any decimal places. So we lost the decimal points. Now, let's go and let's take that calculation. And now let's do the floating point number times the integer and I think you'll find the same thing occurs that our results ending are will end up with the uh, decimal value in the floating point and an integer value in the uh, integer and so we end up again here with a 12.5 and a 12 and that was two and a half uh, times 5, 12.5, but the 2.5 times 5 gave us 12, but just the integer value, because we stored it in there, it gave us the 12. Okay. Well, let's now, this is where we can run into some problems. I'm going to do a division this time, where I'm going to take the floating point number divided by the integer, and let's see what we get in each case. Well, hmm, we got a 0.5. Did I get, get those right? No, I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, yeah, I got those right. Uh, for a minute, I thought I had the right answer. We've got a 0.5 for the floating point and a 12 for the integer. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, oh, let's rerun it. I thought that was looked wrong. I forgot to change that to a division. You've got to watch my typing when I do these. And yes, I could start the video over or cut cut it out, but I'll let you see my mistakes. Now we got a 0.5 and a 0. That looks better. Well, what have we done? We've taken 2.5, divided it by 12, or I'm sorry, by 5, and gave us 0.5. The next one we took the 2.5, again divided by 5, that gave us 0 or gave us a 0.5 if it would have been a floating point number, but since it's an integer, we only got the integer part, which was a 0. Okay. Well, let's reverse that. 
and let's do the integer as the numerator and the floating point as the denominator and see what happens. Uh, let's make sure I get these correct. And this time, I ended up with a 2 in both cases. So what I, what I had was a 5, integer 5, divided by 2.5. And 5 divided by 2.5, well, that's 2. And I got a 2 there. Well, was that a fluke? Let's see. Well, let's see by changing the integer from 5 to maybe 8. And we'll change that integer value to an 8 and rerun it. And now we have a 3.2 and a 3. So when we did the division in that manner, okay, 8 divided by 2.5 gave us a 3.2. When we did the integer division, we ended up with a 3. So we can see that depending on the results or what we're using for our calculations uh, we get different results if the result is an integer or a float. Now I'm going to do one more to show you one other thing that can happen and I've got a floating point number here but this time I'm going to take the integer and I num 1 divided by I num 2 uh, I can't comment out the other results because we're not really worried about those for the moment. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take the two integer values and I'm going to store the results into a float. So I'm going to take an integer 8 divided by an integer 6 and store the results into a float. And when we run it, we get a 1. But this is an 8 divided by 6, and you would have thought, well, should not we have gotten a floating point number since the results were stored in a float? Well, here's another place we have to be very careful. Because we were doing integer division or integer calculations over here on this side, it treated the results as an integer, and so it... Um, stored the integer value in that floating num point number. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss any future videos. Please check out and subscribe to our other Dan on Tech channel playlists as well. Thank you.